Hi everyone, welcome back to Much Ado About History, and welcome to another episode in my Civil War cooking series. And today I'm using a recipe out of this book. Um, this is a book I picked up at a gift shop at a museum many years ago. It's called Union Army Camp Cooking, 1861 to 1865. The author is Patricia B. Mitchell. And what I'm going to ma be making today is probably the simplest and most basic of all Civil War foods, and that is hardtack. Okay, so again, here's the book that I'm using today. And um, even though hardtack was a staple of the soldiers' diet, it was not something they loved. It was something they simply had to tolerate. Um, some of the ways that it was described here in the book, uh, worm castles, men would often find worm and, uh, worms or insects um, hiding out in their um, pieces of hardtack, sheet iron crackers, um, so that gives you an idea about how hard these crackers actually were. Tooth dullers, jaw breakers. So it was something that they basically had to deal with, but this is not the kind of cooking or cuisine that they loved. But it was transportable. It's something that they could carry around with them and eat basically at a moment's notice. Another thing about hardtack and why it was so popular is that it was incredibly easy to make. Um, very, very few ingredients, and really it's mostly just flour and water. I'm going to put in just a pinch of salt also, just for a little bit of flavor. Basically, the thing to remember is it's a six to one ratio. So for every one part of water that you're going to use, whether it's a cup or a half cup, you want to use about six times the amount of flour. So just keep in mind that six to one ratio. You're just going to mix it, knead it, roll it out, make it into square crackers, and bake it for about 20 to 25 minutes. All right, here's a quick look at the supplies that you're going to need to make your hardtack crackers. You'll need a baking sheet or a cookie sheet, uh, some parchment paper to line the cookie sheet. That'll just help the, from the, keeping the hardtack from sticking to the baking sheet. You'll need a mixing bowl, a measuring cup, maybe two measuring cups, um, some toothpicks, I'm going to include some salt, cutting board, a pastry cutter, a rolling pin, and of course, your flour. All right, so let's get started. So the important thing really is to remember this whole idea of a six to one ratio. Six times the flour for every one part of water that you use. So I've just got a half cup here. And um, I'm not because I'm not going to make a ton of this. I just want to make enough to be able to demonstrate this to you. So six parts flour. So you're no, you're going to notice it's going to be a really, really dry mixture. That's four. Five. Whoa, that's fun. That'll be fun to clean up later. Okay, six. And so, right, nothing but flour in the bowl right now. So, one part water to go with that. And you'll notice that even with the water in it, it's still going to be a very, very dry mixture. And so um, have clean hands. I just washed my hands. And now you're just going to kind of mix it together by hand. All right. You're just going to kind of knead it into, into a dough. And like I said, it's going to be really a really, really dry mixture. So now I've got my dough on the cutting board. And what I would suggest that you do is just... Try to press it flat a little bit. Maybe just flip it over a couple times. Try to get it as flat as you can before you start to roll it out with the pin. It'll just make it a little bit easier. Okay, and then take your rolling pin. Maybe just put a little bit of flour on the rolling pin. That just helps so it doesn't stick. All right, and you just wanna try to roll this 
Make it as flat as you can. It doesn't have to be super thin. All right, but you don't want it to be too thick because then it's going to be really gooey and chunky and weird. You want it maybe like a quarter inch thick, something like that. So you're just going to keep doing this, just kind of rolling it out. Try to you know keep the edges kind of as square as you can until you get it to about the thickness that you want. Maybe about a quarter of an inch thick or so. So now I've got it rolled out to about the thickness that I'm looking for, maybe a quarter of an inch or maybe a little bit less or a little bit more in some places. It's fine. Um, I've got uh, a pastry cutter or dough cutter. You could use anything really. I mean, really any sort of a knife or even something like a pizza cutter might work. And we're going to cut this into squares. Um, Hardtack was always a square shape, about three inches by three inches. Okay, so it doesn't, again, doesn't have to be perfect, but it's kind of what we're looking for. Say about, that's probably about three inches right there. I'm just going to try to get as many square pieces as I can. Okay, I'm just going to keep cutting them like that until I get as many as I possibly can to make my hard tack. So now I've got my hard tack crackers cut out and they're obviously not all the same size, um, but I was going for about three inches by three inches. So we're getting there. We're almost ready to put them in the oven. We're not quite there yet. Every picture you see, in books of hardtack, uh, they always have this like a waffle pattern. And so I'm suggesting that you get a toothpick, okay, or something like it. And we're just gonna make some little patterns in the hardtack. It almost looks like they used to have like a little waffle pattern of dots. Okay, typically like this. And I don't know if it was to help it bake or if it was to help it absorb or, you know, let out the moisture or maybe it was easier to break when it was cooked or something like that. So kind of like a simple waffle pattern. So you can keep doing that or you can kind of just kind of have fun with this a little bit. You could maybe do some different things. So there's another one with just kind of a real basic pattern. So the next step is we're going to take our baking sheet. I'm going to line mine with a little bit of parchment paper. This will just help um, to make sure that the hardtack doesn't stick to the baking sheet. If you don't have parchment paper, if you have maybe like, you know, a cooking spray, you can put that on there just so it won't stick. And I'm just going to take my finished pieces of hardtack that I all put with the little little waffle pattern shapes or star pattern or whatever you want. I'm going to put those on the baking sheet and then these are ready to go in the oven. I've got my oven preheated to 350. That just seems like a good baking temperature. So please remember that you do need to have it completely heated up to temperature before you put the hard tack in. Don't put it in a cold oven. And also remember that anytime you're going to use the oven, either have an adult's permission or adult supervision. Um, if you have an adult helping you, that's great, but definitely make sure you let them know what they're doing. Ask their permission to use the stove before you do any cooking or baking. Okay, so I've got my oven. It's ready to go. It's preheated to 350. And going to take my hardtack on my baking sheet and I'm going to put it in the oven. So 
So the book says bake at 350. Well, I said 350. It said bake for 20 to 25 minutes. I'm going to go with 25. This is such a simple thing to bake. You can't really mess it up. Okay, and we're going to start counting down from 25. All right, our 25 minutes is almost up. Make sure you've got some sort of an oven mitt before you reach to get the baking sheet out of the oven. And let's see what we've got here. Okay. So they haven't really changed in appearance too much. Okay, they've kind of curled up on the ends a little bit. Um, but they smell baked. They looked baked. They didn't really turn golden brown or anything. They're not really going to do that unless you really kind of overcook them. I'm going to let them sit for about five or ten minutes, and then I'm going to show you how you would eat your hardtack. All right, I've got a picture that I found here of a Civil War soldier's mess kit with his mess tin, Civil War soldier's hat. And there you see a couple hardtack crackers, a couple pieces of hardtack. So that's kind of how it authentically would have looked. And here's one of the pieces that I made. And I think I came pretty close. So hopefully yours looks kind of about the same. Okay, so I've got a couple pieces of the hardtack that I just baked right here. And um, the name, it makes sense. If you look at this, this is it, there's a good reason why they call this hardtack. And even though it's basically fresh, if you can say that about hardtack, it just came out of the oven. Uh, it's still very brittle. All right, it's kind of crunchy. Now, this is something that really was just baked. If you were a soldier in the Civil War, you're not even getting this for maybe weeks or a month or more after it was baked. So would have continued to harden and really become as hard as a rock. And so the Civil War soldier would not have just taken this out of his haversack and just like chomp down on it. You really would, you almost probably would break your teeth. So I'm going to show you how a Civil War soldier would eat hardtack. And what they would typically do, they would take their hardtack cracker and they would take some coffee. So soldiers in the Civil War, they drank a lot of coffee. And what they would typically do if they're going to eat hardtack is they're going to dunk it in a cup of coffee, the coffee that I just brewed up. And that'll do a couple things. One, it softens it, and it will also give the hardtack a little bit of flavor because it'll take some of the coffee flavor, and then they would try to eat it. So here we go. it does not have a lot of flavor so if you're looking for something that's got a lot of flavor this is not it now it is chewable it's edible and it's not great eating but if you were a civil war soldier this would keep you alive this is going to give you the food the nutrition the calories that you need so that you can march so that you can fight you can do whatever it is that soldiers need to do excuse me while i chew so, thanks for joining me today. Hope you learned a little bit about cooking, a little bit about the Civil War. And um, until next time on Much Do About History, thanks very much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.